Okay, here it is. The Capcom Arcade Collection. No, obviously it's not the new one, you dingus. It's not out yet. So, it, b b before the recording session started, I had to turn off a bunch of those, uh, those stupid borders that happen by default where they try to make it look like it's on an actual arcade cabinet and the, the screen's curved and the camera's pulled away slightly to make it look like you're uh, looking into a cabinet trying to play a Switch game in handheld mode when it only takes up a third of the screen due to all the visual filters is, uh, is very difficult to do. But anyway, let's just have some cool robots smashing each other around. Yay! Uh, you see they got the cool, uh, the cool, you see they got the Capcom cow in the, uh, corner there? That's their iconic mascot, the Capcom cow. Yeah, just fucking run those people over. Do whatever you want. Live like it. Whoa, hey, whoa, whoa, hey, you can't say that on the internet. So, you're actually quite limited with the, uh, the gun. Hey, look at that. They got black people in Japan, apparently. Or at least in video games. So yeah, you only get 40 bullets with the gun. So use them wisely. It's like that one game, 10,000 bullets. Give or take a few bullets. That isn't funny. Um, yeah, so there's lots of games on the Capcom Arcade Collection. And I wanted to start with this one. Because it looked cool. Obviously, I never played this in the arcades back in the day, because I don't live in Japan. What the fuck is this? Japan? What are they even saying? Some kind of moon language? This game is... Shit. I don't know, I was doing my impression of just like a, a low-effort YouTube commentator. Uh, I do miss the, uh, the era... <clears throat> where uh, YouTube was dominated by people just working out of their homes and low-budget stuff. It, it had its charm, as opposed to YouTube now, where it's just like frickin' Jimmy Kimmel and all that manufactured stuff. Her, 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 Jimmy Kimmel is so funny. Uh, YouTube is becoming for boomers. I used the uh, Boomer Wojak just then, but uh, you really shouldn't do that because Wojak's officially lost all comedic value a couple of days ago. They've officially reached the uh, the normal parts of the internet where, where painfully unfunny people are aware of them now. I saw a particular video that confirmed that, and uh, let me just show you a clip of it, and uh, afterwards you will never ever use a Wojak again. All right, so let's start in the top left corner where we have the Vancouverite. A little bit of casual racism right off the bat. So this guy is uh, presented as a stereotypical Chinese man and uh, with the Chinese flag and the little hat. Okay, so I guess that really wasn't that bad, but the point still stands that normies know about Wojaks now and it can really only get worse from here. The inevitable conclusion of this is that there's going to be a Wojaks on Ellen DeGeneres someday. And okay, everybody, last week I asked you to send in your favorite Wojak for our contest, and now we're going to look at him. Oh, look at this one. He's being a cranky boy, just like my nephew. <laughs> oh, that That is an accurate portrayal of what Ellen DeGeneres evaluating Wojaks would sound like. But she ain't even around no more because she was outed as a, a horrible, awful lady who was being abusive to her staff. As Tim Dillon once famously said, she's running Abu Ghraib back there. <laughs> so anywho, how about these cool robots, eh? You think this is what the future is going to look like in some distant day when robots have replaced humanity in every conceivable way? Because it's coming. 
right now as you're sitting here wasting your life watching a let's play there's currently a, a corporate fat cat in a suit somewhere trying to brainstorm all the different ways that a robot can replace you all the different jobs out there greeter at walmart a robot could do that indian tech support guy who tries to scam you over the phone a robot could do that prostitute uh, well, we'll find a way. I have read many articles about the relationship between man and machine, and needless to say, in the next 20 years, things are going to change in ways they never have before. At the time of recording, AI is something controlled by man, but by the year 2045, it might be the other way around. The singularity is coming, you see. Soon AI will get so complex that no human being could ever possibly understand it. And what happens from there? Is, is that going to be a positive thing or a negative thing? Will we have the robot wars? Who knows? I think I accidentally hit a fast forward button. Those text boxes went by a lot faster than they should have. So, this uh, gratuitous amount of uh, mechs on screen seems rather Gundam-esque, doesn't it? I was never big into Gundam. It was on and Toonami in the uh, early 2000s, and I was aware of it, but I never quite uh, sat down to actually enjoy it. That's the big feature of this claw that I picked up, by the way. You can pick up enemies and shake them around. It's like Wario Land Shake It, in a way. It's why you little... Uh, did we die? Darn it all. Thankfully we can insert more uh, virtual quarters. I mean, we already paid $40 for the game if we couldn't, you know, just keep putting in more continues. It, that would be a great loss. So on one hand, it's cool that Capcom put all these arcade games together in a collection, but it, I do kind of wonder why they left out the later ones, the, the more advanced 3D ones like uh, Power Stone and uh, others presumably. I guess maybe it would have been too hard to do from a development standpoint. Gosh, these enemies are just knocking the crap out of us, aren't they? This is what the old-school arcade boomers would call a, a quarter muncher. Not to be confused with the ticket muncher at Chuck E. Cheese. You gotta stay the F away from that thing. You could lose an arm if you're not careful. That thing will munch more than tickets. They should have made that like the, the sixth uh, scary robot in Five Nights at Freddy's. It's just a... It's just an ordinary box that kind of shuffles down the hallway, inspired by the ticket muncher. America never got cool arcade games like these. If you live in rural America especially, your, your local arcade scene was either non-existent or just absolutely pitiful. The nearest arcade anything you could find would be at your local bowling alley and the bowling alley is 15 miles away and then all the machines there are practically broken, or at least half of them anyway. And the working ones are really lame, you got like The Phantom Menace the game and that's not even a recent movie and uh, I guess America's just too big of a country to have a competent arcade scene. Easier to do in Japan, because everybody's just crammed into a tiny little space. Don't have to cover a wide surface area. So there goes that octopus thing. We savagely ripped off all of his tentacles. Except for one. Jesus, what did he ever do to us? So anyway, there's plenty more games to look at in the Capcom Arcade Collection, and we will look at them. But not all of them, though, because a lot of them are very similar. They basically just made the plain one about five times over, so I don't think we'll do all of those. But still, plenty to look at.